What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Snowcast Sports Talk Podcast, episode 56. Um, I wanted to start by just giving a bit of an apology. It's been about 11 days since the last podcast had come out. Um, We had a very unexpected family emergency pop up in my family, and one of my relatives needed to get an emergency surgery. And so the past week or two has been just been there's been a lot going on hospital visits checking up trying to figure out what's going on um i kind of want to leave it at that but i just want to apologize for the delay in episodes especially during a time where guys the giants are in the playoffs for the first time since 2016 i want to start with when i became a giants fan here's the truth um i went to the university of maine orono and when i went there I met a couple people who lived on my floor from Connecticut, and I was never really a football fan before that. And these guys from Connecticut were watching the Giants. And so Eli Manning, Odell Beckham, Victor Cruz, Sterling Shepard was just signed. And that season was actually the first year I watched, really watched the Giants. I remember watching every game, um, and I fell in love with them. And it's kind of a lame way to be a fan, and I understand that, but that's really the truth. And I remember after that playoff loss against Green Bay, I sent a tweet. I don't have the tweet, but I know I sent a tweet saying, hey, the future's bright. Like, it's only going to go up from here. And I just couldn't have been more wrong. And it put a lot of things in perspective. You know, when your team makes the playoffs, it truly is a privilege. It's an exciting time. Um, It's not something to take lightly. And you always want your team to take advantage of those opportunities. So where I may say a couple times, this has been a great season and a huge success. This isn't where I want it to stop. And I want the Giants to beat the Minnesota Vikings. I believe the Giants can beat the Minnesota Vikings. Um, Starting, I guess, with the Vikings, and by the way, the structure of this podcast is going to be a little bit sporadic. I don't love doing episodes by myself. It's always tough because I I like to be able to jive back and forth with a co-host or someone who we can kind of, you know, create commentary. So doing it by myself is just a little bit different. So bear with me if I jump around a little bit. But the first thing we need to touch on is the Giants got the opportunity to play the Vikings just three weeks ago. Um, We played the Eagles, rested our starters. We beat the Colts, got into the playoffs. And the week before that, on Christmas Eve, we got to play the Vikings. The thing to take away from that game was we lost to the Vikings by a 61-yard field goal, and we lost the turnover battle, I believe, either 2-0 or 3-0. We had an interception, a fumble, and a blocked punt, and they could still only beat us by that field goal. The Giants have a real chance to win this game here, and that's a really exciting thing. And I really believe that the Giants can win this playoff game. It won't just be great for the team. It'll be great for the fans, and it'll be great for our future, not just going into the next playoff game, but for the years to come. Winning a playoff game is an awesome, awesome achievement for any team, especially a team that's rebuilding in a year one rebuild like the Giants are. Let's start with Brian Dable. Brian Dable was my number one guy I wanted for the Giants when he when his name popped up. Um, he's eerily similar to Joe Judge, was at Alabama, was under Bill Belichick, but the difference between him and Joe Judge was he was the offensive coordinator for the Bills, and it was always tough to figure out, was it him or Josh Allen? And I think we've learned they're both great. Josh Allen is still an absolute stud at quarterback, but Brian Dable's offensive philosophy has obviously worked here for the Giants and he has built his team and used his players in a totally different way than he did at the Bills. Um, So I feel very confident going in that Brian Dable should be coach of the year and will put us in position to play to play well in this game and be competitive. The next piece to that is DJ and Saquon. When the Giants played the Vikings three weeks ago it was a very different Giants team. That game, the Giants threw, I want to say, 45 times, and they only ran 14. They got Saquon involved in the pass game, but Daniel Jones was relied on heavily, and I thought Daniel Jones played a good game. That interception by Patrick Peterson was a little bit behind, and Peterson made a great play. He's a great player, uh, arguably Hall of Famer. So that's okay, but I think Dable is going to come into this game with a different game plan. I think we're going to see the Giants run the ball. Saquon got a week of rest. And I think we're going to see them 
attack with the pass, but let the run game lead up to those bootlegs, those play actions, sort of what they've been doing every other game that has made them successful. Saquon Barkley needs to go off. It saddens me that I see people predicting that Saquon won't be here next year, and I'm very much a person who doesn't, who I'm following the trend that the running back is becoming more and more devalued. The running back's window of opportunity to play prime football is one of the smallest windows in the NFL for players. And it's tough to justify paying Saquon a three or four year deal because we don't know where Saquon will be in three or four years. Hell, Saquon the past two years has not been great. And it's not been all his fault. Injuries have plagued him. But with all of that, Saquon this year has been an absolute godsend for this team. And his big playability and his endurance and the way teams pay attention to him have given other players chances to rise and shine. And Saquon is someone that we need to pop off in this game. We have got to run the ball more against this team. Their defense is very weak. The Vikings have one of the weakest defenses in the NFL. The reason the Vikings were 13-4 and four was because of Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and DJ Hawkinson. And Cook, their running back. They have an explosive offense. We need to take advantage of the run game. One, because the defense is weak. But two, let's keep that offense off the field. Let's burn some clock and play Giants football. That's the way we've been playing this year. It's been awesome to watch. I actually love it, and I think that's the game plan going into this, Um, and I think it's the way we win. I do always say, though, on these podcasts and in Twitter and just around friends and family, I will defer to Brian Dable's opinion and decisions when it comes to game. If they want to throw the ball 55 times, I trust Dable thinks, or I trust Dable that that's the best plan possible for us. My opinion, though, Let's change up the game plan and go back to what we're successful at. Let's go back to how we beat the Ravens, how we beat the Packers, how we beat the Titans. That stout run game that no matter what the score was, we didn't give up on it, and it paid off in the end. And it's not just Saquon's legs. Um, I believe it's Chris Sims. The Giants have, they're a five-legged beast. Saquon's two legs, Danny's two legs, and Graham Gano's foot kicking field goals. We need Daniel Jones to have some designed runs. This is a playoff game. It's now time to put everything on the line. I've always been someone who wanted to keep DJ healthy all year, obviously, but this is a playoff game, and Daniel Jones, as shown against the Colts, can be very deadly with his legs. The way Saquon attracts defenses gives DJ the ability to make big, big chunk plays for us. Let's get back to the run game. A final piece here I do want to touch on, not really to do with the Vikings, but something to just think about. Mike Kafka, our offensive coordinator, who has done a ridiculous job this year, has two head coaching interviews for the Texans and the Panthers. Do I think he'll be hired? No. Do I think Mike Kafka will stick around for four years the way Dable did with the Bills? No. And the reason that is, is because Daniel Jones has not been the best quarterback over the past four years, and what Kafka has gotten out of him, Saquon, and really this whole offense, even these wide receivers who are not home-name guys, Kafka's been able to do a lot. So I don't think he'll stick around forever. Do I think he'll leave this year? No. If he does, though, I personally believe we will be just fine. Brian Dable is the person who has his hands all over this offense, and whoever our next coordinator is, as long as Brian Dable is our head coach, I am not going to be concerned about losing an OC. We might lose four or five in the next eight or ten years, the way Dable has this team moving right now. Love Kafka. He's done a great job, and he will get an opportunity, and I actually think he will be a good head coach. He might be a little young, but I do think he's a very smart NFL mind. But I just want Giants fans to know, for me personally, I'm not stressed about Kafka because Dable's not going anywhere, and that's what I was. That would that would be my concern. Brian Dable um, will put a right offensive coordinator in place for DJ for Saquon, and I, I believe this offense will still move in the right direction. Let's talk a little bit about the defense now. Um, the defense has been beat up, and um, one of I'm not going to remember his name now. But he's on the uh, 
Just Giants podcast, I believe. And he posted a picture, and it was a great meme. But the Giants have no injuries, guys. They have no injured players on their injury report. So that means we could possibly see a Dory Jackson and Xavier McKinney back, plus Aziz Ojolari, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, and my guy, Kayvon Thibodeau, on the defensive line. The defense is very important for this game. We all know Kirk Cousins is a statue back there. They have some injuries on the O-line, and that is where we win this game. When Kirk Cousins is on the field, we need Zizo Jolari, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, and Kayvon Thibodeau to get home. Excuse me. It's going to be tough, though, because Wink, our defensive coordinator, needs to keep guys back to defend against Jefferson, Phelan, and Hawkinson. So we need our defensive front to get home. Wink will still call his blitzes. We're the highest blitzing team in the NFL, and we knew that was going to happen. But the defense has a big challenge ahead of them. And if you can get Kirk Cousins off his off his like rhythm and get him overthinking, you can win this game. It's been one of Kirk Cousins' like Achilles heel for his whole career. So if we can do that, that would be huge for us. So the defense has a huge challenge ahead of them. Wink has a huge challenge ahead of them, but I think they can do it. I didn't have a note here to talk about special teams, but it's been up and down. If we can just play normal stout special teams and not have any blocked punts, again, that puts us in a better position. So special teams just needs to be sound, get their job done, and we should be all set. This is not an easy game but it's a winnable game, and that's awesome for the Giants. That's an awesome opportunity for us, and I really hope they take advantage of it, and I really hope they play a great game, you know? I I go back and forth in my head. The Giants community is tough because if you say, hey, it's been a great season, like really happy with where we are, people are going to say, oh, you're a loser. You don't think we can go all the way. No, that's not it. I just didn't believe this is where we would finish, and it's just cool to be here. I actually thought we would finish 9-8, and eight. We finished 9-7-1, and one, but to be in a playoff game and feel like we really have a chance, I didn't expect. It's just a really great feeling. At the end of last year, when Dave Gettleman and Joe Judge were gone, Joe Shane was my top choice, and Brian Dable was my top choice. And last year, when the Giants were an absolute mess with Mike Glennon, I was watching the Bills. And the fact that now we have those guys here in New York, they're the right fit, and it's been a great season. We've done a lot with not great talent, And hopefully, in the future here, we just keep adding talent and getting better at different positions that we need help. It's been a great season, though. And I'm really excited for this game tomorrow. And I'm really excited for all the playoff games. But the fact that the Giants get to play playoff football is something that, um, yeah, I'm not going to take for for granted like I did five years ago. It's not something that you get easily. And it's not something that always comes around. Um, I just kudos to them and kudos to the fan base and kudos to the content creators and kudos to the players, the coaches, everyone. Um, It's just been a fun year to be a Giants fan and we've shocked a lot of people and it's been a ton of fun being able to, for lack of a better phrase, rub it in their face and, you know, show them that we're a real team. And uh, yeah, it just feels good. It feels good. We've been doing this podcast now. We'll be coming up on a year here in a few months, actually, which is pretty ridiculous. And, you know, we're going to hit that offseason here in the next few weeks. And we're not going to be going anywhere. You know, we get to talk about the draft. We get to talk about the offseason, who we're going to re-sign. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up in the future, and I'm excited about it. And I hope you guys are too. I know I've been back streaming on Twitch, and that's been going really well. But, you know, I do want to give the podcast a little more love here. So, um, you know, you may see more content in the future than just this. But I appreciate the people that like, that comment, that stick around through this. It's been a lot of fun. And the fact that I've stuck with it for this long is good as well. Cause sometimes content creation for me is a roller coaster. We'll see if the giants win. I hope all of you guys root for the giants, keep them in your thoughts. Let's see if we can pull out a victory here, which would be absolutely ridiculous. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you all. I hope to see you guys down in the comments. I'll be sure to respond and I'll see you all on the next podcast. Go giants.